welcome back we were discussing the power diodes in the topic of power electronics and the previous two lecture we have covered the diode switched rl load and the diode switched rc load in this topic we will cover the nc load along with the diode l stand for inductor and c stands for the capacitor so here a circuit is being shown where a diode d1 is connected and the load consists of one inductor and one capacitor the source of voltage is basically the dc source and a switch is connected in the network for the current to flow in the closed circuit when the switch is closed at time t equal to 0 when we say the load is nc load here l stands for the l equivalent and c stands for the c equivalent these may come from a very complex part of the network consisting of various registers, inductors and capacitors where one L equivalent and one C equivalent we can obtain as the series combination or the parallel combination of so many inductors and capacitors. If we apply the KVL equation in this loop for which the current I is flowing then the source voltage Vs can be written as LDI by DT which is the voltage across the inductor and 1 by c integral i dt which is the voltage across the capacitor the time limit is given from t naught to t that is the initial time to finally type it is considered that the initial voltage present in the capacitor is vc at time t equal to 0 now if we send the initial condition for time t equal to 0 the capacitor is initially uncharged then the current equation that we get is Vs under root C by L sine of omega naught T which can be written as IP sine omega naught T. So IP is the maximum value of the current and it is at the frequency omega naught which is given by 1 by under root LC. So omega naught is 1 by under root LC. So the maximum current is given by Vs under root C by L that we have seen in the derivation. So with the known amount of capacitor, value of capacitor and the inductor with a DC voltage, we can find out how much maximum current will be flowing in the network. So here in the graph, we can see that when the graph is plotted, when the time axis for the current flowing in the network and the capacitor voltage. So the maximum current that the circuit is having is given by Vs under root C by L. If we differentiate this current di by dt with the expression of current as a function of time t sine derivation will become cos and the maximum value will be vs by l so at time t equal to zero the maximum current di by dt current is vs by l and the capacitor voltage we can obtain once we know the current equation so it is one by c and the integration coming from zero because the initial time is zero and the final time is t for any time t which is equal to Vs1 minus cos omega naught t. It means that the voltage Vs, which is the DC voltage of the source, it is sub inc increasing of the capacitor to a voltage of 2 Vs. The maximum voltage will be 2 Vs at a particular time. And here the Vs voltage will be at a time t, a uh, particular time when the switching has taken place. So at a particular time t1, the time being pi by under root lc the diode current i falls to zero so if we see that at the time t1 here and the diode current is falling to zero and the capacitor is charged to a voltage d 2 vs so the time t1 if we see here the current is basically zero but the capacitor voltage here is basically two times vs where the time t1 is given by pi under root lc in an lc circuit without resistance now if you see here in this network we have not included any resistance this means that there will be no energy loss in the network energy transfer will occur only between the capacitor and the inductor due to the oscillating current so current will be oscillating and energy transfer will take place between the capacitor and the inductor without having any energy loss so the diode in series with the switch prevents the negative current flow so we have a switch connected in the network and then a diode is connected so this switch will prevent the negative current which is flowing in the 
circuit. So without the diode, the LC circuit would oscillate indefinitely. So if you do not have the diode in the network, because the diode only act as a switch, when we close it, the current will start flowing, but current will flow only in the unidirectional. The current cannot flow in the reverse direction and current should flow only from anode to cathode. So if we don't have the diode, then the LC circuit would oscillate indefinitely. And all the switches uh, can be in the form of BJT, MOSFET or IGBT. These are electronic switches which typically block the reverse current flow. So when we have a switch, this switch is in the form of electronic switch. Uh, this we will study very detail in power electronics coming lectures. And the switch and the diode simulate electronic switch behavior. So here the switch that is being shown is very simple switch which simulate the electronic switch behavior in the form of BJT, MOSFET or IGBT. The capacitor output can be connected to similar circuits with switches and diodes to obtain multiples of the DC supply voltage for high voltage applications. So when we require high voltage applications like certain examples we have pulse power or superconducting system then the output voltage that is obtained from the capacitor this will be connected to another similar circuit with the switches and hence the voltage will keep on increasing. Let us solve one problem uh, in the LC load circuit which is derived for with the, with the help of a diode. The initial capacitor voltage here is basically given by uh, V0 minus 220 volt. So if you see here in the capacitor there is no DC voltage. So there is no source, only the capacitor initial voltage will derive the network and the capacitance value given 20 microfarad and the inductance value is given 80 milli uh, micro Henry. If uh, the switch S1 is closed, so here the switch S1 is closed at time t equal to 0, we have to determine certain quantities uh, with respect to the LC load, but the energy is present only in the capacitor which is driving the network. So if we need to find the peak current through the diode, so the equation for the peak current we have seen that is equal to Vc0 under root C by N. This was derived in the uh, circuit equations where the Vc0 is the initial voltage of the capacitor which is equal to 220 volt and the capacitor value is given as 20 uh, 20 and the inductor value is given 80 so it comes to be 110 ampere now here the omega naught we can calculate which is equal to 1 by under root lc which is equal to 25000 radian per second this is the natural frequency of the system which is at 25000 radian per second so the final steady state capacitor voltage if we need to find which is equal to 1 by C integral IDT minus the voltage which is present in the capacitor initial which is equal to minus BC naught cos of omega t because the sign expression will give you the cos expression when you integrate it. So at time t equal to T1 uh, 125.66 microsecond this value is equal to 1 minus 220 cos pi which is equal to 220 volt. So that is the final uh, voltage. So this completes uh, the second lecture on power electronics F version where we discussed the LC load. In the previous two lectures we have discussed other type of loads and in the coming lecture we will discuss the RLC load as well as the application of free wheeling diode. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.